So these are the pros and cons of Section 8 for landlords. Section 8? Ah! The tenants will destroy your property. Section 8's the worst. Wrong. Section 8 is the best. But before I checked it out, I used to feel the same way that you probably do. I've owned apartment buildings, duplexes, single family homes all across the country, and none of them are as easy and as good as a Section 8 rental. I have close to 20 Section 8 rental properties and counting, and there is simply no better way to make money in this economy than having Section 8 rentals. In this video, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm gonna give you the lowdown on all the issues with Section 8, but we're also gonna bust some of the myths and preconceptions that people have about it. With the ultimate goal that you can decide for yourself if Section 8 is right for you. So if you've heard about Section 8, and if you're ready to see what it's really all about, get ready because I guarantee that this is gonna surprise you. But before we do, and before we get into the video, please like and subscribe to my channel because I'm opening up my books, I'm dropping my pants, so to speak, so you can see exactly what I'm investing in myself with my videos each and every week. If you're not watching these videos, you're not doing the research you need to be investing in this market we're in today. Now we'll get to the best part about the Section 8 program, the pros. The best part about the Section 8 program is guaranteed rents for the landlord. Now what does that mean? So the federal government subsidizes some portion of the rents of Section 8 rental properties. Literally, the federal government pays for a huge portion of the tenant's rent. The tenant is able to pay just a few hundred dollars a month and that is incredibly valuable to the tenant. And they also have a huge incentive to stay. The payments for the tenant are incredibly manageable and if the tenant doesn't keep up their share, they don't get to have the huge benefit of Section 8. So they have a really, really high incentive to keep up their small portion of the payments. The second pro of the Section 8 program is massive demand. And I mean massive. Section 8 is incredibly high in demand due to the following reasons. Number one, there are extremely strict government rules and regulations about getting into the Section 8 program. Because of that, not many people can get approved for a Section 8 voucher, and there is a long, long, long waiting list to even get a voucher, which is the first step of the process for the tenant. Sometimes tenants have to wait one to two years to even get the voucher. Once they have a voucher, they can start applying for Section 8 rentals. You heard that right. Tenants sometimes have to wait one to two years to get at the front of the line to even get their Section 8 voucher. This means for the landlord, there's always gonna be somebody next in line to rent out your Section 8 rental, which means extremely low vacancy for you. So if you're a landlord that has had issues renting out your property, this can be a perfect solution because you're always gonna have a backlog of tenants waiting to rent out your property if you can get that house in good enough shape. So if you have a property that's approved by Section 8, you don't have to market the property. You can go to the Section 8 rental board and they'll post your property for you and get a tenant lined up for your properties. And because there's such a long waiting list, you'll never have to wait for the next tenant to move in for one, two, three, or four months. You can normally just get a Section 8 rental tenant like that. Now to the best part, the longevity of a tenant's stay. So the strict government rules and regulations incentivize Section 8 tenants to maintain their properties to avoid losing their voucher. And think about it, these tenants waited one to two years to even get their voucher. Now they're in that rental property, they don't wanna repeat that process over again and wait another one to two years. So most tenants live and stay in their Section 8 rentals for seven years. Seven years, you heard that right. These tenants, once they find a nearly free home that is well cared for, they stay there forever, reducing your vacancy to near zero and limiting the amount of turnover repairs you have to do on that property. Now throughout the lease, you can apply for rent increases, though it takes a long time to get a yes, but if you can get your money right at the beginning, you're set for the better part of a decade. Did I say longevity was the best part? Okay. I'll be honest, the money is the best part. Section 8 properties usually rent out for above market rate. The government does this to incentivize landlords to put more properties in the Section 8 pool for low income families. We're talking 20 to 30% above market rent, meaning if the market rent for a three bedroom home in your area is a thousand bucks a month, with Section 8, you can get $1,200 or $1,300 a month for the same property because you're doing it through the Section 8 program. The incredibly high demand and housing shortage has the government basically begging landlords to put their properties in the Section 8 pool, incentivizing us in a huge way to get this done. And lastly, and equally important, one thing that most people discount is that you're doing a service to the community. You are providing low income housing to people that are lining up one to two years in advance to get. People talk about housing shortages all across the country, but in reality, the people who are really helping the average everyday American get into a home are landlords who put their properties up for Section 8. New developments want top dollar and are mostly geared toward luxury homes and luxury homeowners. The only people who are really able to help out everyday Americans are us, the Section 8 landlords. It's
It's exactly the opposite of what people think when you tell them, oh, you're taking advantage. No, in fact, I'm one of the few people providing safe, affordable housing for people earning under the median income. Now, obviously we're business people first, and this is one of those amazing times that doing the right thing makes you a lot of money. Now, I don't want it to seem like this is all sunshine and rainbows. There are issues that come along with this government program that you need to know before you can make an educated decision on what you wanna do. And that brings us to the cons. First and foremost, having a Section 8 rental property means that you and your tenant need to have required annual inspections. The Section 8 program has local housing authorities come, inspect, and define any issues that may occur within the property. They come and do this inspection every year, and if they find something, which usually they do, you have to get it taken care of. Now, this is usually small, but every inspection comes with the possibility of finding something big in your home that needs to be taken care of. And it may have to be taken care of now instead of waiting for a year or two years. For me, I like to think of the inspections as a benefit because I like to keep my properties in good shape so I can keep them for decades. And if things go unchecked for years, just like you going to a doctor, the small problems to fix turn into big ones and you may need to have huge renovations later on to fix those small issues. So having an annual checkup for me has caught most of the big issues that could have become much bigger. And along the same lines with any government program you put your property in, it comes with strict government rules and regulations. Before approving the housing, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, or commonly called the HUD, will determine your unit's fair market rent, or called FMR. Once the FMR is determined, you are obligated to cap your Section 8 units at that rate and are not allowed to accept outside payments that will result in higher rent than the fair market rent. So, what does that mean? It means that you have this document that is provided to you based on your area and you're not able to go beyond that listed number if rents in your area skyrocket fast, which has happened in places like South Florida or Manhattan or Los Angeles. But in most areas, Section 8 rent is higher than the market rate by 20 to 30%. Rent increases over the years can take a very long time to get approved and they can only be up to the fair market rent that Section 8 determines for you. That's gonna be the maximum rent that you can get. Also, Section 8 program does not include security deposit. You or your property manager will need to go directly to the tenant to obtain this. You can ask the tenant directly for one month's full rent as a deposit, but that is the limit. And this is another problem you may face if you go Section 8. Usually the Section 8 office will not pay rent until after the tenant has moved into your property. So there may be a delay on your first payment, but as soon as you get that first payment, the next payments will be consistent every single month. As with so many other aspects of property management, gaining a good grasp on the issue at hand is 90% of the battle. If you're considering incorporating Section 8 rentals into your property, be sure to not only do online research on the topic, but also talk with other landlords and property managers who rent to Section 8 tenants. This will help you get a better understanding of what the actual experiences are of renting out your house or your home on Section 8. Now, of course, no process is perfect, but I'll tell you right now, I've been growing my Section 8 rental portfolio month over month, and it is my favorite investment type in this market. But please make your own decision here. There's lots of pros and cons to each choice, but you've got the information. That's the important part. Make sure you ask me any questions down below in the comments because I would love to help you. Like and subscribe and make sure to check out my video next week. It's gonna be a doozy.